All right. So uh, I'm very happy to present our project to you. And uh, you know, this project is a very big project. So choices have to be made. Second, it uh, is not our goal to just say, you can do this number one, number two, number three, but to give some homeopathic content and let you see how you could use the program in practice, really in practice. And then from these examples that we are using, Matt and myself, give you a feel how the program works. So the introduction therefore will be very short. We will dive into very precise things immediately. But for those who don't know our project at all, just two or three slides here to introduce it. So Radar Opus is the first all-in-one program, homeopathic software, which means, as you can see from this uh, schedule, that it contains repertories, to be precise, 93 repertories. It contains Materia Medica, 750 different documents in 12 different languages. It contains Winship, which is a patient file. Of course, you're unlimited. You can put unlimited number of patients. And these can be uploaded to Clifical, which is a clinical case database online, somewhere in the cloud. And other users can do that as well. So it is a vessel to communicate. And in fact, Clifical and some special project of Clifical will be the content of my lecture on Sunday, to which I invite you very warmly. So, uh, again, for those who don't know the program, this is how it looks. And I'm going to present now just in a very short and brief way, the things that you need to know, according to me, to be able to use the program from scratch. And these are just a few, seven things, I would say, seven things you need to know. When you look at this screen, at the left side, you see content. It's like a web design, like a web page. Left side is content, and to the right, uh, I'm sorry, left side is table of content, and to the right side is the content itself. Okay? So you see all these repertories listed here, and to the right, you would see the content of those repertories. Now, the second point is that, as in almost all programs, you have a line of menu and a line of icons. The one thing that is a little bit specific and the consequence of the all-in-one program is that five icons here, these top five icons, change your program to behave from a repertory program to a reference program to a patient file, focus on remedies or focus on families. So these five icons, we call them the table of content icons, okay? So why don't I show you this very precisely here in the real program? This is it. So you see the table of contents of the repertories to the right side synthesis, okay? But if you would like to open another repertory, you just click here on Berica and it opens the repertory of Berica with the first rubric, awkward, lets things fall from the hand, okay? The same goes for the references. You can choose any uh, reference to be open, like the primer of Materia Medica, and read the references here. You want to choose another one, like in Italian. You click on it and it opens on the right pane. So left table of content, right content, okay? Same goes for patients that have been anonymized. I will not open the files, but you just click on a patient and it opens to the right. If you want to know about remedies, you get a full catalog here with no less than 8,200 remedies. And if you want to use the program thinking about families, you click on this icon and you see the list of families, more than 5,000 different families with information and that can be used in a number of ways. I'm going to turn off my webcam. Um, voila. Okay. 
because you're looking at my screen most of the time. So then basically the other thing you need to know is that uh, in the repertories and anywhere else in fact there are clusters of tabs. You see there are only two tabs here and the first tab contains all the repertories. So whether I open two or three or four or ten repertories your screen is automatically very neatly organized these are the repertories okay same goes for the materia medica these are the materia medicas you see them and i can switch in these tabs from repertory to materia medica in an easy way <coughs> the next thing i'd like to explain to you is when you click on something with the left arrow it's to know about it this is in all programs eh? left click is to know about it so when i click on the aconite here with the left button i get the keynotes of aconite as an example okay there is also in our program much much functionality and to make that easily available we have created also the access with the right click control click for the mac users when I do the right click here on the symptom, I can, for example, use this menu, you see it appearing, and take this current symptom. You, with the left click you select, with the right click you do something. It's like in normal life. You call John and then you tell John you want to go to the movie or go to the park. So first select with the left button, then do something with the right button. And then at last, Every screen that opens, or almost every screen, may have one or more icons, specific icons. This is the synthesis screen we're looking at. And you're seeing here the screen with the glasses, looking glasses, which helps you find the chapter. Okay? You click on vertigo and you go there. Vertigo. Or this other icon, which allows you to change the languages. Probably there's quite a few people who would like to use synthesis in Spanish. Well, it's just one click away. You click on Spanish and there is your repertory in Spanish. Going a little bit lower to show some symptoms in Spanish. You recognize the language and going back to English for the sake of this uh, presentation, just a few clicks away. And that's basically all. I have summarized it in this... Uh, uh, PowerPoint slides. All you need to know is this, the layout of the content, the three first points, that the tabs are just about repertory, uh, references, patients, whatever, but clustered automatically to clip everything clean. Think of a live, left click and a right click and just every screen, look what is on the screen, because what you're looking for may be just there on the screen. In addition, there is here the settings icon. You see that settings icon, a little wheel. And when you turn on it, it gives you the options for that screen. So again, very easy to access. Let me show you one example. You can show the repertory in two columns, but when you remove this, immediately the repertory is in only one column. Okay, so settings icon. And then of course the help, our program is very strong with the help features every screen has help features to explain you what you can do in that screen so that's my introduction about the program itself and uh, how you can use it the abc now let's immediately move on if there there is no question eh, marco for the moment this is just let's say probably half of the yeah. people know this yeah all good so far all good so far and what i will do now then is to explain about making additions now making additions is uh, a job not everybody may be familiar with not everybody may want to do and therefore i have divided it in four steps in different steps and the first thing is about receiving additions you would like to receive additional information, don't you? We're speaking about additional information to synthesis. And yes, of course, 
it is correct. The easiest way to get new additions, new information in synthesis is to wait for the new version of synthesis. And I'm very happy to give you this avant-premiere to tell you that after a long wait, we will release probably this year the new version of synthesis and the name is already known. And like the mother, before the child is delivered, most of the time she knows the name. Well, we know the name. It is synthesis Adonis. Adonis is the Greek god of beauty. And we really believe this next version of synthesis, which is the result of many years of work and many changes in technology, many new functions, will really be very beautiful and attractive. So this is one reason why we call it synthesis adonis. Now this is the future, even if not far away, but let me speak about today. And when we say receiving additions, and it's about today, then the word is synthesis addition log file. And the log file is just a file that contains a number of operations that can update your synthesis with certain remedies in certain rubrics, additions. Why would you want to do this? Well, because you've heard there is a new remedy in town, and not a new kid in town, but a new remedy in town, and you would like to use that remedy as well while you look for your patients, your care for your patients, your repertoires, etc. Why would you not like certain log files? Well, maybe because you don't trust this prover or you don't like this remedy or you just want to wait or you just maybe believe it's all too difficult. There may be many reasons, but at some stage, I believe many people would be very happy to receive additional information into synthesis. And this is why we have conceived a way not to to, uh, that you don't have to push, but to pull. I don't know if you're familiar with this technology. It basically means you have to do something or you don't have to do something to get it. And we have chosen the technology that you can get the additions automatically from us. Of course, you remain in control and you decide which additions you like. So let me show you here how this works. This item, we call it the content updater. And it's here under help. You can check for new content. And automatically a window opens, connects to our server and tells you these are all the documents that you can get and that are books. But if I click here on type, also files with additions. You see that? Hmm? So this is delivered to you and then of course you just have to click, select it and download it and it's installed into your computer. So making it very easy. Now let me explain you a little bit which kind of content we are offering through this feature. Well, there is a number of ways. First of all, as I told you already, there may be a new proving. Passer domesticus. It is the house sparrow, is a new proving. You can see it here in the list. This is a very interesting proving by the Norland people. And when you click on this file, these symptoms, the, this remedy is added to your synthesis. Okay? So communicate a new proving is one way. Another way is there may have been a seminar. And some of you may remember the Bruch seminar, the homeopathy one seminar that I uh, created with Rajan Shankaran. And at the occasion of this seminar, we created the log file with information related to that, to that uh, seminar. Let me show you uh, just a little bit. Um, sorry, wasn't open here. No. Not this one, this one, voila. So this was a free radar, radar opus data update that came with additions of the buttercup from Clark and from Jan Scholten. And here some examples of these additions, the buttercup itself. And then also more additions of very small but new remedies 
by Jans Scholder from the wonderful plants. Eh? Saxifraga, Pelargonium, Coffea, Brassica rapa, and Disocactus. Okay? So this was made, this log file was created at the occasion of the uh, seminar in Bruges. Get back to my presentation. Or another reason for a log file, we were contacted by our friend and collaborator, Farouk Master, <clears throat> who told us in these days, I have three remedies I would like everybody to know about. Very important. Lobelia purpurascens, mustard gas, and solaninum aceticum. So, on his instructions, we created the log file and we released it to all our users. Here it is. You see the three remedies. You click on it, you install it, and you have the relevant information, especially these days, that may be helpful again to treat your patients. One other reason may be clinical information. And I'm going now to show you a little present we gave at the occasion of Christmas 2019, where we launched a uh, newsletter. This is the newsletter announcing a Christmas gift. And in that Christmas gift, we had clinical additions from Jeremy Sher, very graciously offered to us by Jeremy and that contains between five and six hundred clinical additions where he says these additions help me to prescribe the remedies I have been proving. So very, very valuable information. They were offered along with the homeopathic proving of fulgurite, lightning struck sand, and argon again approving by Jeremy. This file is offered here. You see it? Click on it and you have the information. So you see there is a number of ways, reasons, that at least different people may wish that you receive additions. So the next question really is, well, if you one day you would like to decide to make additions, to receive additions, is it easy? Is it easy? Eh? And okay, I think the best thing I can do for you is to show it. So let's take this one file of the three remedies, okay? You select it in the list, it's pushed onto you, okay? You say download, you click here on download, and the program is asking you to import the additions, tells you which file, etc. In fact, you don't have to read anything of this, you can just say start to import. You see the button here, start to import, okay? And at that time, the program starts to import the additions of these three remedies that goes very fast. The additions have been important, okay? You close the screen and you get one of the message reminding you that three remedies have been imported in your synthesis uh, repertory, okay? So, when I close this, I would like to know whether this is true, whether it has happened, and, and how easy it is to use this information, of course. So for this, I go to my search. I use the search icon here. This is the easiest for me. And I search for a remedy. One of the remedy was this uh, uh, Solaninum Aceticum. Yeah. Solaninum aceticum. You see it here? And I say search it in all open repertories, for example. And immediately synthesis shows you the additions that have been added of the remedy Solaninum aceticum that weren't there before. How do you know this? Because of this little asterisk. You see the little asterisk behind the remedy? This means this is an addition. So when we go to respiration superficial, we double click on the symptom to go to the symptom, it's always the same. We see that here in the correct alphabetical position, solaninum aceticum is present. So we can use it straight away in our repertorization. And why not, if we return to the search, 
to the search results. Sorry, lost it. Solaninum aceticum. Voilà, here it is. We add a second symptom. Here it comes. Uh, let's say uh, congestion from the chest. You see, I'm dragging the symptom now. Eh? So this is a little detail. In our program, you can do almost everything by the keyboard or by the mouse. You have the choice. And eh? so now I drag it to this clipboard. So we have two symptoms there. And you see a number of bigger remedies, but also immediately in your repertorization, solinum aceticum is available. So you import it, the next moment you can extract it, you can use it in the analysis, you can save it to your patient file, etc., etc. So it makes it all very easy and smooth. So maybe you like to receive additions, don't you agree? Marco, any questions so far or I move on? Uh, yeah, just a very quick one that I wasn't able to answer myself. Uh, somebody asks, um, once the additions are imported, is there a way to automatically remove them in the future, if you wish? Yeah, uh, for the moment, if you want to remove all the additions you have imported, that is not really possible. Uh, you can remove them one by one, of course. And look, I can go here. You click left on the remedy solin aceticum and then you can say remove the added remedy. One by one you can remove them. You want me to do this? Voila, here it is. Did you want to delete this remedy from this rubric? I say okay and that's what it takes. Gone. One by one. Okay. Great, thank you. Another question? I don't think so for the moment. Timothy, can you double check as well? No questions, um, but we have some comments of users who are saying that they love the additions and use them all the time. Okay, thank oh, you. Oh, there's one question. Um, when new remedies have been imported into synthesis, are the keynotes also added to the remedies file? The keynotes to the remedies file. Well, the keynotes for us in our program it is a part of the references. So it's a different chapter. You see, here are the different keynotes we have. Van Wunsel keynotes, Lippe keynotes, Allen keynotes, Guernsey keynotes, etc. So this is a different chapter. So when we speak about making additions to the repertory, we don't speak about changes to the references. So I'm afraid this is two different chapters. All right. So let me go on. The next point is when you get excited about receiving additions, maybe one day you get excited about making additions. And why would you like to make additions? Well, because you were listening to one of these seminars in the upcoming summit and you hear interesting information which you would like to not forget to use for your patients from now on. Or you are reading in one of the books, one of the magazines, one of the websites, and you say, oh, that's interesting. Desire for green salad in this remedy is interesting. Or peanuts or whatever. And you would like to make these additions to your own synthesis. And eventually you will have a case that is cured, clearly cured, strong enough. And you say, this is a case of this remedy, but there were two, three symptoms that were key in this patient file in this patient and that are not present in the repertory. So you want to submit them and enrich the repertory with your clinical experience. Again, you may not want to make the additions too soon if you don't have a lot of clinical experience, if you don't read, if you don't hear. But again, I believe that eventually you will start to make additions someday. Now, in this lecture, I will not explain at length how to make additions and when not and where and criteria, etc. There's just one slide I will offer to you um, when to make additions from approving. This is a slide also and an idea 
I have discussed with uh, Jeremy and uh, through working through the literature on this and boils down to seven points for me. Okay. When do we make an addition from the proving? Well, if the symptom there is frequent or intense or peculiar, okay, FIP. There is also more relevance to make an addition to, from approving into the repertory if it appears in more than one prover or more than one potency or more than one localization, eh? like stitching in the right ear, stitching in the right ear, stitching in the right ear. Then there is this other idea, the addition is more relevant when it is in tune with the totality. Eh? When there is other symptoms that speak about teaching, stitching, when there is other symptoms speaking about ear, okay? Six is the inner conviction of the proving director or the proving subject. They say, this is a symptom that I feel this sensation, this dream, this, uh, this pain, this whatever, is really important. I feel it's, it's really expresses the remedy. So inner conviction may play a role. And then at last there is a no. Okay? All these are do's. There is one don't. Be careful and don't put too quickly, too easily, a, a time or a site as a symptom in the repertory, okay? like a head pain temple in the left temple. Well, it has to be a number of times in the left temple. We must be sure that the left temple is typical because there's a 50% chance that it's left or right. Okay? So just to give you some idea of how to decide which symptoms from approving you can take into the uh, uh, repertory. All right, but then, okay, you've decided to work through a certain remedy and you find a addition that can be made to the rubric fear of being arrested, okay? I go to my synthesis, I go to the rubric and you see here the rubric fear is about to be arrested with 11 remedies. But the remedy I've read is not yet here, so I want to make an addition. Do you remember, can you imagine what we need to do to make an addition to that symptom? Well, think of the seven criteria. You select the place where you want to do something. This is a symptom. You click right on it pops up a nice menu and then at additions you see here the possibility to add a remedy okay so again the hotkey control f8 is there if you want to do it very quickly without uh, the mouse and in fact the keyboard many times goes quicker than the mouse but i hope it is clear for you how you can make the addition here to this rubric when you uh, activate this command, a screen opens telling you there is a delusion, uh, I'm sorry, oh I'm at delusion, sorry, go back to the one I wanted, yeah, I want to do it at fear, yeah? so uh, there is a fear to be arrested and first I must select my remedy, now my remedy was cuprum not the regular cuprum, but the cuprum phosphoricum, okay? So I just type it and I select it here from the list of remedies. I leave it in first degree, I leave it as a human, and all I need is just to add the author, which I can do by typing the author full name, the abbreviation, whatever you like. You can just type STJ, which is Jan Scholten, and you read it in the book Homeopathy and Minerals. Okay, and you see while you are doing these four steps to make the addition, you have a summary here, what the program understands that you want to do. You want to add this remedy in this degree with this reference to the current symptom. You say, yes, you got me, you understand me. You click on OK. And then you see here, cuprum phosphoricum with the little asterisk again and the author STJ1. And that's what it takes to make an addition. Now, the nice thing is, if, you wanna, if you're working, let's say, 
through the chapter of cuprum phosphoricum, and you have another another uh, symptom here. Let's take away from home. You go back here to the additions menu, okay, and the cuprum phosphoricum is already there, and the STA1 is already waiting for you. And so all you got to do is just press enter, and immediately, just one time enter, the same remedy with the same author is added to another rubric. So again, you understand this interface, we're very proud, it's been thought to be easy and fast, the way you think, at lightning speed. And I think this is a nice example when you work through a remedy and you want to make the additions in the repertory. So, my question, do you agree it is easy to make additions? Some questions at this stage about yeah. the second part. Yes, we have some questions, a bunch of questions. Um, one of the first ones is about additions and how do we know that an addition is valid and that it has been proven properly? In some circles, it seems that maybe there's a rush to make additions. So how do we know that the content of them is valid? Yes, in synthesis, every addition is referenced with the author. You see that? And like here, Meli Lotus comes from Clark and Patak. Now it is your decision to decide whether Clark, this is C1 is Clark's dictionary, PTK1 is, uh, what is it, the concise repertory of uh, uh, FATAC, whether these are valid sources or not. So, uh, of course, you can speak about uh, progressive, conservative, you like Clark, you don't like Clark, you like FATAC, you don't like Clark, here is an addition by GK0. This is Gerkens. You know Gerkens maybe, quite famous in Europe. Okay. So it is, we leave it in fact to the user to choose the uh, authors they like. And by choosing the authors, then the repertory changes. Let me quickly show you this. Uh, you have the rubric Fear of High Places. Okay. This become a big rubric. Okay. Because all the authors are concerned. Now, if I say, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm used to using the repertory of Kent. Maybe some of you remember the repertory of Kent had only four remedies, okay? Four remedies. Well, look, here in this list, you see what we call repertory views. And when I select Kent's repertory, bang, the four remedies of Kent are here. And your whole uh, repertory, synthesis repertory is now trimmed down to be Kent. If you say only Kent is reliable for me, well, okay, that's what you like. That's what you can get. Or you may say, well, give me all the classical remedies up to Schmidt. And then this rubric becomes 18 remedies. Or you say, give me a conservative view, which is the quantum view in our language. Eh? Then it becomes 37. Or you may say, well, give me all the remedies, even the ones that are a little bit hypothetical, are really struggling with this patient, gave them adjunct triticum, pulsatilla, sulfur, the lot, give me the big choice. So, in fact, the reply to the question is very flexible. It depends upon you or maybe even upon the patient you're dealing with, you can use the additions you like. And then another question is, after additions have been imported, is it possible to change to Millennium or Quantum View or a different version of the repertory so that that way you will not see those additions? Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, you can change when, when I go here to Kent for it to take the extreme. All these additions, I don't see them. You see them? Oh, this is Kent with proofings. I'm sorry. Kent alone. So just everything is removed, hidden, in fact, not removed. All right. So all this works with the views repertory views, a very powerful function. And then um, we have some questions about, can we add our own rubrics as well? And if we do choose to put in our own additions, whether it's rubrics or remedies, can we uh, choose to not link them to an author? No, you have to link them to an author always. We require precision, if I may say that. So an addition that is not referenced, we will not allow it. Even if it's your own name, or we will we request you to be precise. Referencing is the standard in uh, scientific literature, and we also in synthesis we require everybody who makes additions to reference them. 
uh, with this first part of the question, symptoms is not yet possible in this version. This is possible in version three, which uh, do I have it? Yeah, let me tell you to prove to you that I'm not um, boasting. Look here, we have we are here ready with the uh, other functions to add a remedy, to add a symptom, uh, etc., etc. So this is in test and coming soon, eh? coming soon to a place near you. But in the current version, it's existing remedies to existing rubrics. All right. Can I move on because I have a lot more to say? <laughs> okay, well let's let's leave it at that for now. Yeah, if it's very important, maybe you tick it, and if we have time, we address it in the end. Okay. So you've received additions, you started making additions, okay, and now the next thing is you want to share them because you're a teacher and you've worked through this remedy and you want to share it with your students. Or maybe you just want to share it with only one friend. Or eventually, or possibly you want to share it with the community. Well, all this is very possible. Why would you do it? Why would you not do it? Because you're not an island, you want to share them. Because you're not yet sure, you don't want to share them. But again, at some stage, I believe many people would like to share, at least with their friends, some additions. And I'm going straight away to Radar Opus. How do you do this? Well, in the menu, I use the menu this time, there is this item that tells you export additions. And see, when I open this, I get this screen, which contains my additions and tells me there is a destination folder. You kind of need to remember that, or you can move it to another folder if you like. That's all the same, but we put them in data of the user in the log file because you are creating a log file for your friends now. Okay, so this is important to remember. And then all you need to do is to say export. Okay. And then you use your Windows Explorer to go to radar, uh, radar opus, I'm sorry, data of the user, the log file. And you will see here, this is our local time in Belgium, 2043, that a log file has been created. Okay. Now, how do you communicate it to your friends? Well, let me tell you, you just, in fact, Windows, and I'm sure Mac as well, work much the same way as Red Europus. You select this log file, you click right on it, okay? And then you can send it in a number of ways to your friend. Let's take, let's suggest, or uh, let's choose I will send it through a mail. You see that? I sent this file through a mail recipient. All right? I'm not going too fast. I'm sorry to ask only now. Is my speed okay for the things I'm showing? Kim, Tim, is my speed okay? Marco? Yes. Uh, yes, sounds fine to me. Um, I'm sure if somebody has issues, they'll let Tim know and he will. Anyway, I'm, I'm rushing through it because I want to show a lot of things, but anyway. I apologize. And we're getting so, feedback from the group. All good. All good. Ah, okay, fine. So you select a file, you click right on it, just as you read the opus, and you open your mail recipient, which means your email program. And now, is there anyone online who would like to receive my log file just now, who has access to email? Is there anybody there? Nobody? So I will send them to Tim. Okay, and at the same time, I can send them to Marco. Marco me. Okay, and I send, and that's it, done. My log file is sent, and you should receive it in a minute, Tim. Let us know. And then you can import, you just do the opposite operation here. You can import the additions. Yeah? You will put it in this same folder. You open it, you import them, and you will have my additions in your uh, synthesis file just within minutes. Okay? So, Perfect. is it easy? 
What did you say? I say well, I got the email. You got the email, okay? So easy as that, all right? <laughs> easy and very practical. Now the last part about additions is the one personally I like most. And I must try and convince you a little bit and make you enthusiastic. And this is about, uh, okay, I've shown you this. This is about making additions, including the source information. What is this? Why would you like to include source information into additions? Well, if we make additions, for example, from approving, then the proving, the full text, say the Materia Medica, is the source. And then we read through it and we see fear of being arrested. And so we want to make uh, an addition of that remedy in this repertory to that precise rubric. And including the source information means that we make the addition into the repertory in such a way that you can see the source information in the repertory. Why you want to do it? Because it makes the repertory much more precise, much more transparent. People can verify why you make this addition in this rubric. And this creates the possibility of correction and increases the quality. Why would you possibly not want to do it? Because it's just a little bit more of work. And maybe you're in a hurry and you want to just do one addition after the other, listening to a seminar in the next days. Okay, then you can just make the additions as I showed you for the cuprum phosphoricum, one after the other, very fast. But if possible, especially if you have a proving or some important uh, case, etc., consider whether it is easy or not to uh, make an addition including source information. So again, let me show you the proof of the pudding is in the eating. I go to uh, the uh, to my uh, uh, synthesis again and uh, i have imported a file that was also sent uh, to our users with uh, uh, wait a minute uh, here this one yeah. by the way all these files were sent for free eh? f-r-e-e -E. So this is coccinella septem punctata, okay, these additions. I have imported them already, at least let me check because <laughs> uh, it's easy to check. So coccinella uh, septem punctata is here. Oh, lost it. Coccinella septem punctata, yes. And when I ask to extracted i see indeed these rubrics and uh, when i go here to the rubric love for animals yes i must of course show the full repertory love for animals i see coccinella septem punctata with a little asterisk of the addition that it has been, but also with the author, CLE, which is the abbreviation of our, uh, oh no, it's the other screen, anyway, the, the lady with the Russian name, and underlined. Yeah? Now, if you're curious, if you remember my seven, seven ways to know anything about the program, you know what you got to do here. To know about something, you just got to double click on it. And when I double click on it, I see that the lady name is Hamoryshka, that here is the text that led to the addition. I look after a homeless dog. They're all castrated, never mind. We take care of them. So this is the reason, the text, why this remedy appeared in the rubric uh, Love for Animals, okay? One step further, here is a button that says go to the text in the original source document. Now let's see what happens. When I click here, I go to this source document. I look after the homeless dog, they're all kind of... So this is the text, this is the Materia Medica, okay? We're now in the Materia Medica program, all in one, okay? And behind, uh, below the symptom, 
are the symptom repertory symptoms to which this text is linked this source information is linked to animals love for animals and this link goes in two directions look how fantastic this works i came from synthesis i in synthesis i click on the author and i get into materia medica now i am in materia medica i click at this red icon is the red book of synthesis so may remember i click on this rubric and i'm in the repertory and just with a click with two clicks here i can go from repertory to materia medica or even to grief where i still find the remedy as well okay so we have a big directional link here between repertory and materia medica remember the organigram i showed you with the parts of the program repertory materia medica patient phylogliffical but with the arrows in between means we're linking everything okay now uh, let's go back to this materia medica uh, the proving here and uh, okay i'm reading through this and i see there is here a symptom i dreamed an accident the girl stayed to the feet of a brother very sad said the child is dead in the car i was also with my children i said oh there is no link so let's go to the repertory I go to my repertory and I check whether the remedy is present in the rubric dreams of accidents. Oh, it's there. Fine. Okay, it's there. So, but I want to make an addition because it's not in the rubric which is fear of accidents with a car. You see, the remedy is not present there for the moment. You agree? So let me show you how this works. I go to my uh, Materia Medica. I click right, as you can imagine. And I choose here at edit the current symptom that I will add this remedy, including the source text. And the source text is the symptom text on which you clicked. I click on it. There's a little confirmation. You want to add this remedy with this text to synthesis? Yes. I say yes. Automatically, the program switches me to synthesis, to the rubric here. And there, I just have to say additions, not add a remedy. What I have done before, but add a remedy, including the source text. You see this? Add a remedy, including the source text. Then I click on it, I get a little confirmation, this is perfect, I say all right, and the remedy appears, and at this moment, when I click in synthesis on the author, I get the famous screen, I go to the Materia Medica, and in the Materia Medica, also the link to the repertory is present, and I can again switch in two directions as fast and as easy as possible. So. That's all it takes to make an addition, including the source information. So while you look at uh, maybe some questions on this first part, this is the first part of my presentation. The overview I'm giving you is first receiving additions, which uh, any user can do, except the mini people. And the mini, you know, we have four levels of engines, eh? or maybe Tim will explain this to you. Anybody can receive additions. This is the lowest level, okay? Silver can do it. Gold, one level up, you can make additions and share additions. The teachers, the people who become more experienced. And then one level up is diamond. You can also make additions, including source information. So this is my first summary. Uh, I see I am, um, yeah, a little, okay, let's, let's take uh, two or three questions nevertheless. Okay, so uh, one question is, when a new version of synthesis is installed, are the additions that have been added manually lost? Do they need to be manually re-entered or are they automatically incorporated? Well, you make additions in your synthesis today, and let's say in three months time, we release a new version of synthesis. You will just need to uh, import your log file into your new synthesis, and that's one operation, only one and everything totally automatic. 
so you will go uh, here to additions import your you your log file with your additions will be there you say open import and that's it all right okay and then regarding the asterisk that shows up on remedies that are added does this asterisk go away in later versions yes correct correct it's only relevant to the current version totally correct okay and let me see I think those are, I think, um, oh, one more question. Do the additions show only in the user's copy of the repertory? In the user's copy of the repertory. This is a little enigmatic. Uh, there is only one copy of the repertory. Uh, I believe the question may be referring to, they're not automatically added to the collective, like, I make an addition, a personal addition on my Raider Opus. It doesn't automatically go to, you know, another user's computer. Oh, ah, yes, yes. No, no. You make addition to your repertory. It stays in your repertory unless, until you decide to export them and share the file with other people, as I have shown you through the email. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. So I hope with this explanation and with all this example I have been showing, you get the grip of how the program works and things. And, and if you get these seven ideas, how you get the grips of it. And I will try and do the same with my next section, with, which is about analyzing cases. Now let's clarify first what is analyzing a case. Well, basically, patient comes with a story and you give a remedy. But in between those two, points in time, there are some stories. The first one is you break down the story into symptoms and possibly you find rubrics. And if you put these rubrics together, you repertorize them and you get possible remedies. You make a differential diagnosis because you know the Materia Medica, because you read the Materia Medica and you decide for a remedy. So basically, this is the analysis of a case. It has always been like this. Uh, at least for those people who use the repertory to know, uh, to find remedies and don't rely just on their memory. Hmm? I, have give, I will give you a few examples. Kent, what did he do if the, the clinical cases in his lectures that are known? Well, he chose a key rubric of a reasonable size to start a repertorization. And then he added a second rubric and retained only the common remedies. Then he did the same with the third rubric. So if he started with, say, 50 remedies, the second, adding the second rubric, trimmed them down to uh, 45, then to 32, then to 21, then to 16. And like this, he trimmed down the number of remedies he had by eliminating step by step the remedies that were not in common. This was the way Kent was repertorizing. I'm going to show you very quickly, uh, don't save, how you can do this. This is a real case of Kent's lectures and he chose as a first rubric sheepdom. Okay? And then he looked which remedies in this rubric have a desire for open air and they didn't have the desire for open air, we eliminated them. And like this he went on and always it kind of combines these rubrics. Eh? And uh, I will now do it here just quite quickly. He combined these rubrics uh, in such a way that only the common remedies are retained. You know what I mean? Only the common remedies. Yeah? So the remedy has to be in the two rubrics, then in the three rubrics, etc., etc. And when you do this, you end up with a repertorization here with these four remedies. Hmm? Now this is in full synthesis. Okay. If you want to know what Kent really did, you just trim down synthesis to Kent's repertory, revised. And it was indeed a case of magnesium muriaticum. Hmm? Now, 
this way of working has totally been abandoned. And why? Because if I undo this characteristic of making all these rubrics into a compulsory one, and I put them as normal rubrics, you see that the uh, runner-up to Magnesium Muriaticum are Belladonna, Bryonia, Staphysagra, Gentile. A number of remedies that are not present in the first symptom. So in this approach, your first symptom is very critical eh? because maybe Bryonia is a nice remedy with desire, open air, inactivity of rectum, uh, pressure amel. Yes, pressure amel, Bryonia, very strong indeed, etc., etc. So maybe Bryonia must be considered, but in Kent's approach, it is not considered because it doesn't exist in the first symptom he chose. And this is why we have evolved from Kent's way into what we call flat repertorization. So there is a grid that I've been just showing you, which is flexible. And different mathematical approaches allow you to emphasize different remedies. You can find them all here under this icon. And some of symptoms is one way to say magnesium muriaticum does cover all the symptoms indeed. But three remedies cover six of the symptoms and a lot of remedies cover five of the symptoms. Okay, now if we consider the degrees, maybe we consider some of the degrees, then as well, Bryonia comes up strongly. And like this, you have these different ways to do a flat repertorization, which is basically one way to look at the mathematics of the repertorization. Okay, this is what many people do. Then a big leap has been taken from this different ways of flat repertorizations and, and I can tell you there was a time the different software programs were competing like saying we have we have 25 ways of repertorizing we have uh, 27 ways of repertorizing okay it was a little funny but then a big change has come with George Fitulkas and his creation of the expert system where he said instead of allowing us to choose or or or, or, or shall I say obliging us to choose between uh, 10, 20, 30 different methods, we make one formula. We make one equilibrated formula where we combine all the approaches into one result. And this is the expert system. So you get a, a result that is often surprising because 200 variables are considered. 200 variables and algorithms are considered just the same way as before. Eh? Like, does this remedy cover many symptoms or not? Does it cover the mind symptoms or not? Is it a small remedy or not? And so on and so on and so on. All these things the teachers are teaching and, and telling you, hey, this is a delusion, this is important, or this is a strong general, this is a, a general that is very reliable, etc. So all these are combined into one formula. And so let me show you now where this leads you. I will again, straight away, give you an example. Here, uh, wait a minute, this one. Yes, okay. Uh, this is a real case yeah, of mine with Afte and a number of symptoms on the skin and not much more because there wasn't much more, okay? And we repertorize, of course, we repertorize and we see a very scattered pattern. Yeah? Okay, let me just go back to the sum of symptoms. Well, but even at the sum of symptoms, eh, you see sepia, lacasis, phosphorus, tuberculinum, borax, calcarea, etc., mercury. Some remedies eh, important for AFTE, indeed, scattered pattern. Oh, yes, by the way, just while we're on it, you may say, but this is also a little cluttered. Eh, these symptoms that are here uh all belonging to the same symptom a which express purple you see that word purple all over you say this is a little bit um, not easy for the eye well you select them as i have just done select is number one what you want to do with johnny go to the bar or the park no you click right on it and you say i want to group and combine these rubrics and then you get this possibility to create a new rubric containing remedies of the selected rubrics. And you say, you can even rename that rubric. You say, this is my rubric of skin eruptions purple. Okay, 
delete all the original rubrics and keep all remedies. Bang, you say combine and that's it. Okay, here is no new rubric and it shows you a very much more neat repertorization just in a few seconds. But still, the point is the same. Sepia covers all the symptoms, but this is really a sepia case. It's, uh, I don't have sepia mentals, I don't have sepia generals, it's a little bit awkward. So I turn to the VES. This time I go to the analysis menu and I see here the possibility to launch the VES. And what, oh no, sorry, before I tell you how to do this, there is one request. So you do the things you always do. You choose your symptoms. You reflect, you don't choose whatever. The thing you always do, you know to do very well. One additional thing, the only additional thing you need to do for the VESP is to be aware of the underlining, the so-called underlining. Again, this is the table. You will be able to see it again. I'm not going to explain it but you must underline the symptoms according to this table eh? or and very or never seen before intensity of interrogation okay and when you have underlined your sim there is a booklet by my friend steve olson which explains this very well the vest and underlining okay when you have underlined the symptoms here the one the three the two the three these indicate the underlining and eh? so the this, this guy had after all the time, all the time. It was like one week or two weeks without. Then I got another bout of after for two, three weeks. And then he was drinking something from a, from a tin can, again after, etc. So it was very strong, okay? So you must put the underlinings, but basically that's the only thing you need to do. Yeah? Remember, easy and smart. This is Raider Opus. So the only thing you need to do when you have selected the symptoms and created the underlining is you choose the Vitulka's expert system here, bang, and it shows you the results. Here, borax, you've been thinking about it, mercury, tuberculosis, tuberculina, mercury, and SEMP. What the hell is SEMP? Okay, what the hell is SEMP? So this, of course, makes you curious and you say, but, uh, I didn't see SEMP nowhere. Where is SEMP? So you look for SEMP, you just type SEMP here, and you see SEMP is in position 84. But the expert system is bringing it up because it covers after in a strong way and the recipolis as well. So you get curious about SEMP. How do you find information about it? You select Johnny, take him to the park with the right mouse button. Okay. Just a minute here and you search for this remedy let's say in all documents this time okay click on send right mouse button command click all documents so i want to know all the information about send and i see there's a lot apparently there's even in beric a repertory there is rubrics about send i didn't know about it okay we have some rubrics in uh, synthesis we have different materia medicus explaining all about SEMP. And uh, I can read, for example, Clark here. And I see that this is about mouse and skin. You see it even just from seeing the chapters. Semper vivum tectorum is a remedy about mouse and skin. That's it. My patient was mouse and skin. That's it. Okay. So if a small remedy, no, how shall I say, if a pattern of a patient is like incomplete, notwithstanding obviously the fact that you have been taking the case very well, not just a five, ten minute case, eh? don't misunderstand me, but if the pattern that the patient is presenting you is incomplete, is just tailored, focused on, on two, three things, the best remedy definitely is the one who has those two, three things and you go for Semper Vivum Tectorum. And I think I have now a follow-up of this person of probably 10 years. The after almost never, the purple disappeared, Erisipelas never again, etc., etc. Yeah. So thanks to the expert system here showing me or telling me, think about Semper Vivum. All right. 
So I'm going to pause just one minute if there are any questions so far about analyzing cases in these different ways. How do we assign the underlining? Okay, well, you go to your list of symptoms here, and what would be the easiest way to change this three in a one? It is typing a one, you agree? So here, at this symptom, I tap a one, and it becomes a three. You cannot see me typing, of course, eh? but this is basically the thing I do. I just type the number one, two, three, four, when I, after I select a symptom. Okay. One other question. That's it for now. All right. So I told you we will speak about different ways of analyzing a case. Oh, yes. The VES is also mentioned on the website of George, today's website. You can go and look today. He's still proud about it, even if our roads have been split a bit because of Michael but he's still proud about it and the expert system is still something mentioned on his website. Of course, he gives some criticism in the end, but I'm sure it is a very valuable thing and very worthwhile. Now, the next point is polarity analysis. Polarity analysis is again something of the old days, ideas from Berninghausen and it revolves around opposite polar symptoms. What are opposite polar symptoms? Two symptoms that are either a graph or a male, like uh, open air a graph, open air a male, or desire aversion, desire potatoes, aversion potatoes. These are opposite polar symptoms. And the idea, which was launched by Heiner Frey from Switzerland, is if a patient has certain symptoms, remedies may be in the rubric, but if those same remedies are known for the opposite, these remedies are less interesting. The best remedies are the ones that are really uh, uh, coherent with the symptoms of the patients. And in this way, he developed a module on a website with the pocket book of Berninghausen, and we have done the same as a software. So I'm going to show you now a case of, uh, don't save, of uh, Heiner Frey, a real case again, that is in fact on page 23 of his book, for those who are curious to verify things, eh? and where uh, I can explain you a little bit how it works. So here are the symptoms. Worse from wounds in general, desire open air, inclination to uncover, rapid pulse, and worse from external pressure. Okay, when we repertorize these, we see, let me remove this for a minute, we see a regular grid with remedies, with the degrees, as in Berninghausen, and, and I must admit that this is the Berninghausen pack pocket book as edited by Heiner Frey himself. So there are some changes to the original as to remedies and especially to degrees according to his experience and we have followed that faithfully. Now you see Iodium is standing out strongly like a podium pulsatilla follow closely. All right. Now if we add the polar the opposite polar symptoms, again, in our program, smart and easy, just one click, ping, and you see in the second clipboard the opposite symptoms. Look, at warms, worse from, you see, you have ear better from, you have uh, air aggravates and ameliorate, heat and cover, slow pulse, rapid pulse, worse from pressure, better from pressure. Do you understand? These are the patient symptoms on the upper clipboard, and these are the opposite polar symptoms. Now, what is the whole idea of the polarity analysis? A copyrighted term by Heiner Frey, and he has only given to us the legal authority to use this term and present this uh, analysis as such. Well, the whole idea is that for Yodium, the chances are very much increased and very high 
because it doesn't appear in any of the opposite symptoms. You see that? And remember, in the earlier analysis, Lycopodium was the runner-up. Also here, Lycopodium is quite close, but it, it is present in three. So the open air is not a good differentiator for Lycopodium. And this is why Lycopodium becomes much less probable. But even more interesting is that we see that a small remedy present in burning houses pocket boot comes up magnet magnetis arcticus because it covers four out of the five symptoms and has no contraindication in the opposite rubric so if your iodium which by the way was the desired remedy if it wouldn't work you have an interesting magnetus arcticus suggestion even from this old book with a limited number of remedies so isn't that really fantastic okay now i'm going to flush through uh, the next one very quickly so the next one is the energetic picture so maybe you wear some not of the wire pounds points why was a acupuncturist homeopath who found a relationship between points and homeopathic remedies so if phosphorus you have a point i believe it's below the sternum that is sore to pressure. It's, an, uh, how shall I say, relevant to check it if you're thinking of phosphorus. These are the wire pounds, points. Or extended to that, kinesiologists are testing muscles and finding energetic patterns. Now, the Pope of kinesiology, of energetic pictures, is Philip de Grote, and he has created energetic pictures of 1,365 remedies. Can you believe it? 1,365 remedies with a level of precision you have not seen. I will give you one example here. I go here to the beginning of synthesis. And when I click on a remedy, so, so the idea is, I would like to prescribe Amber Grisia. Of course, I can double click, read the keynotes, read the provings, uh, make extractions, differential diagnosis, I can do many things. But the idea of Philippe de Grote and the energetic people is that you can also check the energetic pattern of the remedy. So I click right on it, and I see here that I can choose the Grote energetic remedy picture, which opens a screen. I'm going to make it bigger with a body on which certain muscles are indicated and the green stands for hypotonic so the right trapezius muscle is hypotonic and the left one is hypertonic and that according to him is the signature of ambra grisia you have these other items you can uh, even the nerves the vertebrae is done it all muscles nerves, vertebrae, even the chakras, he's done it all. And like this, for 1,300 and more remedies, you have the energetic picture to verify whether this remedy is really the one you should prescribe for your patients. For those who don't know a lot, well, don't worry. There is also here in the references uh, the books of the Grote, and like the physical examination here which explains the Materia Medica uh, here. Wait a minute. Ambra Grisia is just here, you see? Second cranial nerve, left muscle, everything explained, muscle tests, some other keynotes, etc. His clinical experience. And then uh, last but not least, the full description of the 42 muscle tests. Eh? How do you test the abdominals? It's all written here. And of course, if you follow the courses by Philippe de Grote, you will be even more easy and interesting to follow that. Hmm? This leads me to the last part I would like to show you, and this is about families. Okay. When we analyze a case, it's all about analyzing cases. We use the repertory. We can go conservative, progressive, comprehensive, single way of of uh, mathematics uh, we can use energetic pictures but families families is a big thing and we have done a project with a very nice lady Anne Vervarke from Belgium by the way 
And the essence of this tool is it allows you to find a family through keywords, themes, words, etc. And then you can do a number of things. So again, instead of theorizing, let me show you straight away how you would do this. So I go to my synthesis. And uh, in this case, uh, maybe I will already uh, uh, recall a case to use later. Voilà. So just have a case here. Eh? So I go to my synthesis. You see how quickly I can change from one thing to another, eh? just with these steps. And uh, in the maps, there is this little map where Anna is explaining how she has conceived her family finder. It opens this screen where she gives an explanation how to use the family finder. If you click here, you go to a website where you see a number of videos. You're welcome to listen to them. Okay. But then you go back to your map and there you decide according to her approach first in your mind whether it's a simple case of second dimension or a complex case third dimension and these other words help you to make the decision whatever you have decided you click on it and by doing so you enter this green screen which is a family finder and i'm going to present you very shortly a case here where let's say the guy is very worried about family he's into families and he's in fact a very fragile guy fragile okay so i tap the word fragile and in fact a family his relationship the family worries about the family is in fact an, almost an example of a bigger uh, a bigger uh, how can i say a bigger theme which we can call harmony it's a fragile guy who looks, harm, looks for harmony and who wishes to be close, a family and cares about the family, etc. So in a few words, thematic ideas, you summarize the case. This is not repertory symptoms. This is not mind cares about others. This is just family, fragile, harmony, yeah? themes in a way, okay? Then you click on this search button, okay? And you see in this number of, a lot of things, in fact, I'm going to limit myself because of the time, is you see here families that come up and, and even a few smaller remedies that come up that appear because of family fragile and or harmony. And we see that Pinales here has three hits, covers three entries, three on three. You see that? So it means for this guy, the family that is most interesting is Pinales. Okay? Pinales, Conofirofite. And if you click here, I see the description of Anna, which explains the, the, the major idea of Pinales. Family is like a tribe, and the ego is undeveloped, fragile, family comes first, nature mirror like, well being, depending on family harmony. Okay? Yes, this is my case. So how do I use it from now on when I have decided because of the family finder using words? This is the family. Well, you always again, you click right on it. I see a number of choices. And one of them is to limit my repertorial analysis to this family. There are more choices, but just to give one example, OK? Limit the analysis to this family. Bang. What do I see? Thuya, Sabina the penises, etc., eh, the pines, habeas candidensis, etc., because automatically this family has been added to my repertorization, became an exclusive symptom, eh, much like Ken's repertorization, and shows me among all the remedies only those that belong to this family. And I can then study Thuya, possibly Sabina, etc., to decide for the remedy that fits to the patient as well as the family. So you have the best of both worlds. You can combine repertory analysis and family searching thematic approach into one analysis and help your patients, okay? So while I wait for some more questions, I'm gonna show you that there is a lot more and I apologize to dear Paul, who is speaking later on to the Ortega family, Jan Scholten, 
Bentley, our friend from Australia, and Dimitri Alice from Australia, for not bringing up their fantastic work. But you understand that I had to make some choices, and then maybe next time I will emphasize these. So, please, are there some questions after this? Hello, you hear me? Hello. Yeah, the, those are all the questions that we have at the moment. Um, feel free, if anyone has any questions, to type them in right now, and we can ask Frederick. So there are no, there are no questions uh, because you came on while you were speaking. There were no questions asked so far, eh? Correct, yeah, we've gotten all the questions. Okay, so I may have been uh, too quick or otherwise I have flabbergasted too many people, I guess. Um, there is a question if you can quickly review the Hersky module. Mm, I'm afraid this is uh, not possible in this time frame. Okay. Yeah, basically, the Hersky module is you take, you know, the whole idea is a circle. You know about the circles? So you take a few symptoms into one, in one segment, then in the next segment, and the next segment, and the next segment, let's say four, you combine them, and you have a repertorization of the symptoms in the four segments. This is the whole idea of Paul Herskew, is to put segments into a circle. Perfect. And I think, Frederick, actually now would be a really great time for me to transition and to review the engines and, and the promotions we have going on right now, so that way we have enough time for Matt. Um, yeah. Can I just show one more thing? Sure, please. My beginning screen, the seven things you need to remember, and I hope I have convinced you a little bit that this is the only seven things you need to know about Trader Opus to be able to use it. And then be aware, there is a free demo at traderopus.com. Uh, let me show you here. You click on this icon, you get the demo, and you can try out the next day. So with these seven ideas and the demo, I think you have everything you can dream. Amazing. And the comments are coming through. There's more than I can even keep up with. And everyone is saying thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, that they've gotten a lot out of this um, presentation and so much that they may need to rewatch it. And just a reminder for everyone that this presentation is being recorded and will be available on the JAHC website. So please contact the folks at JAHC to find out on the information about that. Um, so yes, it is being recorded. I know many of you have messaged to re-see something. And unfortunately, we just are in such a tight timetable, but everything will be made available as the recording. So I'm gonna take over the screen right now. Um, so that, Frederick, thank you so 